Time for our rising crisis update. We'll begin with the number of cases here in the United States and around the world. So here in the United States, we have 1,045,000 cases, an increase of 32,000 since yesterday, 60,945 deaths with an increase of 7,900 since yesterday. Wow. Around the world, 3.1 million cases with an additional 100,000 added since yesterday, 227,000 deaths, 675, and then 15,626 additional deaths added since yesterday. The United States continuing, I'm making up almost half the death toll in additional cases. Wow. And that was a big yesterday. jump in the number of deaths day over day. And look, you don't want to ever read in too much no. to one day's numbers, but that is deeply troubling. It's sad. I mean, going over 60,000 is kind of where the administration a couple of weeks ago had said, hey, maybe you know the best case scenario is we end up with 60. Now, maybe it looks more like 70, maybe 80,000. So that prediction, that grim prediction a couple of weeks ago, which we covered here on the show, whenever the uh, they were they really stunned America when they said maybe we'll end up between 100 to 200,000 if social distancing works looks very much like it was a correct prediction and that's you know that's a terrible situation horrible horrible situation that of course we'll continue to monitor here um more hopeful yeah. news though in the let's get some some, some treatment here news. maybe so the trump administration this is leaking to bloomberg news that trump's they have an operation warp speed in order to rush a coronavirus vaccine basically organizing a manhattan project style effort in order to cut the time to develop a vaccine as i've told you guys here before vaccine Vaccine experts say it usually takes about a year and a half, maybe two years, that 10 months in order to do a vaccine would be an absolute record um, in vaccine development. And essentially what they're doing, the National Institute of Health is offering like a Shark Tank style, like, okay, who's got it? They're like, what do you guys have out there? And seeing what they can facilitate in order to spin up um, whatever theirs. But, you know, word of caution, these things take time. Human trials, right. 12 to 18 months at best is what Dr. Fauci has repeatedly said. It's very unlikely, even with Manhattan-style projects and all of that, that we would have a vaccine anytime soon. Yeah. On the other hand, there was hopeful news about trials of remdesivir That's in right. terms of therapeutics. So hopefully maybe we'll get that sooner than a vaccine could come online. Um, bad news on the economic front, 3.8 million more Americans filing for unemployment last week. That makes 30 million right. Americans filing for unemployment in the last six weeks. I mean, stunning. Now you're talking about 9% of the entire yeah. American population. I don't even know what that translates to in terms of the workforce. They're projecting that unemployment will be as high as 16%. So, I mean, these are really troubling numbers. And the reality is economists are also saying, even after we deal with the pandemic, it's going to take a while for yeah. things to come back. Heather Long of the Washington Post tweeting, one in five adult Americans now out of work in America. So just a... <laughs> That's a staggering number, one in five. Insane. And yeah, you get to something which is, it's, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but a lot of the initial projections, but we'll have a V-shaped recovery. Like you be start here, then you'll crash, and then you'll come right back up to where we were. And I just don't see that V happening, and I'm sure many of you don't either, which is that, look, I mean, news out of Washington, D.C., officials saying at least two to three months before the city is going to open up. I mean, there's no way to, the, the, catastro the catastrophe, the economic catastrophe, abounds every single week into permanent closures, yeah. into all of this. So many different industries, disruptions, supply chains, meat shortages. I mean, the longer that this goes on, and it, it maybe it must, um, then we're just going to have we're going to have downstream effects. And Congress just refuses to stopgap all of those efforts by just paying people's salaries or parts of people's salaries. The House of Representatives is not even here, and they have no plans to come back this week because they're afraid of getting sick, but they're not afraid of essential workers out there getting sick. And at the same time, and this is, to me, truly disgusting. Mm -hmm. I can't even really fathom it. The stock market is on pace to have its best month yeah. Since like the 70s. Yeah. I mean, in deck, like, how do those things go together? But it just shows you how utterly and completely essentially fake it is to start with this sort of like, and it's dis totally disconnected from the reality of the lives of the American people. I hope that we can dispatch with the idea once and for all that the stock market represents anything relative to how people are actually doing in terms of their economic well-being in this country. C certainly. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. We're going to have another crisis update back here for you tomorrow. Have a good day.